In this video, we're going to go through the steps to generate an iBERT bitstream for your hardware. Whether you're using a custom board or an off-the-shelf evaluation board, it can often be useful to do a loopback test with iBERT to ensure that each of your gigabit transceivers have a good link with, this, with the SSD on the FPGA drive FMC. We're going to create an iBERT bitstream for the ZCU102 board, but the same steps apply if you're doing this on your own custom board. Note that some of the iBERT configuration options will require that you read the hardware schematics of your particular dev board or custom board. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Vivado and we're going to create a new project and this is going to be a base, basically a base project for your hardware, whether it be an evaluation board like uh, we're doing here, we're going to use the ZCU102 board or if it's a custom board, you'll have to obviously have your own board files for this. So I'm going to click on the boards tab and select my ZCU102 board which will be down the bottom. So I'm going to click on ZCU102 and click next. Now I'm going to click finish. That'll create my base project. Now in this project, we're only going to have one IP. So, and that's going to be the iBERT IP. So I'm going to go straight to the IP catalog and I'm going to search for iBERT. Now on this board, it's going to be iBERT Ultrascale GTH. On other boards, it might have a slightly different name, but it's always going to be called iBERT. So I'm going to double click on that to add it to the project. And I'm just going to rescale this window so that it can be better seen. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in the protocol definition is select a line rate of 8 gigabit per second. So that's the line rate used by PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, the ref clock is going to be 100 megahertz. Now the quad count is going to be 2 because the FPGA drive FMC uses 2 quads, one for each SSD. Now in the advanced settings, I'm just going to leave the defaults here. In the protocol selection, um, you need to know which quads the FPGA drive FMC is connected to. So you'll get this information from the schematic drawing of your dev board or your custom board. The FPGA drive FMC uses gigabit tr transceivers DP0 to DP7 of the FMC connector. Now from the ZCU102 schematic, I can see that DP0 to DP3 are connected to quad 229 and that DP4 to DP7 connect to the quad 228. So I'll assign the protocol to these two quads. Also from the schematic, I can see that the clocks connect to the MGT ref clock zero of their respective quads. So that setting is right. Note that these choices are specific to the dev board or the custom board that you're using. So now for the clock selection, we want to choose a clock that's independent of the transceivers, like the dev board's system clock. In the case of the ZC102 from the schematic, I know that it has a 300 MHz LVDS clock connected to pin AL8. So I just put that information there. Now in the summary, I can just click OK. OK again, and that will generate the output products for that IP. Just click on generate. That'll take some time. So I've just sped things up here. So once the output products have been generated, I want to go up into the sources window, right click on the iBERT and then click open IP example design. And then I need to select a location for this example design. This is going to create a new Vivado project. Uh, it is going to open up a new Vivado window, as you can see. Um, then the only thing you need to do with this project is generate the bitstream. So I'm going to go down to the left bottom corner and click on generate bitstream.
So that'll take some time. I'm speeding it up here. Now I want to open the hardware manager. I need to have my dev board turned on. I need to have the FPGA drive FMC plugged into the FMC connector. And I need to have the two M2 loopback modules plugged in at this point. So now I want to program the device. Now the uh, bitstream and the debug profile should be automatically um, filled in. Um, so now I'm programming the device. Now we want to click on auto detect links. And if, if everything worked properly, you should find eight serial links. And as we can see, they're all operating at eight gigabits per second. They're all running error free. And if I shift over to the right, just to check the loopback setting, it's set to none, which is great. That means that the loopback is actually being done by the M2 loopback modules.